So, Amphibia. In my opinion, Amphibia right now is legitimately a really just fun show to watch and in my opinion one of the best currently airing isekais. Now, what does that mean and how did I start watching the show? So, I was bored, like I usually am, and I was looking for a new show to watch and I got, I don't know, I got my, my YouTube recommended to watch a show called The Owl House, so I picked it up, it was very good, I loved it, it got better in season 2, but I was season 2 stopped, I needed to watch more. So I looked at the recommended and I saw one show that is also on Disney and that I can watch and I was like okay it also got a pretty decent rating let's give it a shot and that show was Amphibia. Now for those of you who, who don't know what an isekai is it's basically the concept of a character being transported to another world. Now the concept is heavily 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 used to the extreme like to the point where it's annoying in the anime community but it's not really something that has been done that much in the west and not really something that's as common here as it is there so it's interesting to think that I, I never thought of it when I watched the show but the show is for technicality sakes an isekai so let's go over just the simple premise of what the show is all about the show follows the main character Anne as she goes around exploring the world of Amphibia with her foster family there, the planners. Uh, the show just goes over all of her adventures in the town, how the people in the town look at her and all of those kind of stuff, all of the crazy shit that can happen, like there's literally an entire episode of her just her wanting to make pizza and for some reason there's a gigantic tomato monster and that's how they want to get their tomatoes, so it's like there's a whole lot of these kinds of adventures going on in season 1 which it's very like normal and what I expected coming into the show considering it's a Disney show I didn't expect too much but then season 1 ended <laughs> and you may think well what, what's the difference for the entirety of season 1 there was very glimpses of like lore and like more things that might happen one of the main things that might happen was Anne's other friends that were transported with her as we found out during the final scene of episode 1 um, where we looked at her friend Sasha now she was captured by the toads and was basically like there <laughs> in, the, in like a gigantic scary tower right and throughout the entire season we kind of see how she progresses and how her experience in that world is going through until they both kind of clash together Anne and Sasha at the finale of season 1 and from there things are picking up like massively in terms of like progression obviously season 2 is not all about Lot and lore and everything like that there are a bunch of feelers, there are a bunch of fun episodes that are very reminiscent of season 1 but it much more focused heavily on like an actual adventure throughout the world and much much more heavily about the lore and about the actual like the growth of the characters another thing that i should probably mention and i mean by this point we kind of like <laughs> i mean we already skipped all of the spoilers and whatnot but another thing that's very very fucking great about the show and the reason why season 2 caught me so off guard is because for the entirety of season 1 they build up the town in which Anne and the planners live in we have all of these great great side characters they all have their own unique things and like ideas going for them we have like Maddie who does like witchcraft, we have Chuck who grows tulips, we have Wally which is just like the weirdo, we have the old lady that appears randomly and I don't know, <laughs> she's also doing stuff. We have the mayor that actually gets a lot of screen time and you initially like really hate him but he actually like grows as a character like a lot of the characters does in the show. And we also have Ivy who is like another just fun character to watch. And all of those characters and all of those build up suddenly just get again this is kind of a spoiler by this point but it's kind of just get like thrown to the side as season 2 is all about leaving the town and going around exploring the world of Amphibia and not just the town 
in which Ann and the Plantos were living in. And I don't know, I just found it so different because I was just expecting a regular slice of life show and then I got something that was completely different, something that I genuinely just did not expect from a kids TV show. And then through all of that we get, again by this point I, sh I don't want to go into spoilers so I will say this as like the final spoiler warning of watch season 1 it has a lot of just fun family time and then season 2 is where all of the plot and everything that's cool is starting to happen. So if you think like that's an interesting to a show that would be interesting to you, give it a watch. Because it, de it definitely gets better, you'll be surprised. But I think after this one, we should go through the finale and all of the setup that was going into the finale of season 2. Because throughout the entire show, there was like just whether it was Sasha, whether it was Marcy, another like the last of the three friends that was transported. And all of those characters and all of those moments and everything just clashed into one to fight like this one evil guy which was actually like throughout the show was kind of hinted that he might be like the evil bad guy of the end and all of the characters have their own motives and their own like ideas and their own things that they want to do and they want to test and it all clashes like down together into like this massive finale which literally has a warning of um this is probably not the most like kids friendly episode that we heard like there is a legitimately warning at the start of the episode and that's because nothing like gory or anything like that happens but there are some definitely like things that could leave a child kind of scarred especially like a smaller child uh, overall what i'm trying to say is this show will completely take you off guard if you're not expecting it to be anything unique or anything special. If you are, you might expect some things and you might like try to over predict what is about to happen. And I mean, it is a kid's show, it's very obvious what's going to happen. But the payoff of seeing everything on screen is just so fucking fun. Like, I mean, one of the best moments is earlier in the season two. Anne had this moment where her family was in danger, the planners, and she basically like went into this ultra instinct mode <laughs> and just like completely like beat a gigantic monster. And then like literally the same thing happened at the finale, but instead of just like being in, oh cool, it's like a funny episode, we'll never forget about. No, she legitimately got a like special power blue thingy that just makes her into a fucking beast and like come on is this really a kid show or is this just something that's having so fun with the concept and just rolling around making things better and it's like if you're looking for a fun show that is like very family friendly but at the same time like heavy with character growth and like all of these weird story arcs and adventures and a different world this is definitely the show for you and I'd recommend it heavily because I just have so much fun watching it because every time I'm like this is a kid show this is so stupid yet everything the writers do there is complete fucking golden and they make all of the great things that you'd want to see happen and it's just it's fun it's very much fun season 2 started airing kind of recently and it definitely brings another just an entire twist to the show continuing the, with the, all of the events from the finale of season 2 and Jen just like completely changing the the show in which again who, why are you still here if you if you don't want to see spoilers but um, the planters and Anne are going in back to earth to our world it's like why why is this short show does all of the things that you'd want to see in a good isekai anime yet somehow it's a kids cartoon that you can watch like on a saturday <laughs> on a saturday morning with your kids or whatever right like this is the reason why i loved a lot of the disney shows like something like star the owl house gravity falls is because they have that child friendliness but at the same time, they're not afraid to do lore and to do things that are interesting and fun. And yeah, if if it wasn't obvious enough from all of this ranting, 
give this show a fucking watch. It's amazing. It's just, it's a lot of fun, and you should definitely give it a try if you if you just want to watch a good fantasy world and everything like that. But yeah, that's how I've said out to the video. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Till then, bye.